All right, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Defiant Legacy. I'm your host, as you all know, Theus Elijah McBee. And today's guest is Mr. Steve Sinclair. All right, I'll let you introduce yourself, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Steve, if you could, this is going to be uh, the Amazon episode, right? Making money through Amazon. So if you could um, kind of introduce yourself um, and tell everyone what it is exactly that you do. Um, well, I'm Steve Sinclair. Um, Instagram handle is the same thing, Steve M. Sinclair. That's where you can find me. Um, what I do is basically, um, it's, you know, I'm in the e-commerce space. Um, so pretty much Amazon is the main platform, but we do sell on Amazon, Shopify, eBay. Um, but Amazon is where the source of our income comes from. Um, that's where we establish uh, the most part of our business. And um, we're doing basically the same thing Walmart, any one of your big box retail stores is doing. Um, we're purchasing product at wholesale prices and we're just using a platform to sell it back to customers. You know, it's supply and demand. Um, so there's a huge opportunity there. So, um, so we've just taken that, you know, that opportunity and just uh, keep growing that. So um, pretty much that's what we do, man. Yeah. So how, how do you uh, get started with that? Um, you want the short story or the long story? Whichever one you want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, I've always had a, you know, that, that spirit, entrepreneurial spirit. Um, when I was younger, um, my mom or, you know, anyone around me always asked me what I want to do. And there's two things I always want to do. I always want to, I always say I want to be an investor or I want to be a pilot. And then as I started to grow up, you know, I found out I was scared of heights. So I'm like, all right, you know, pilot, it's not going to work. Um, so I'm always, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how can I make money, um, doing something else where it's not like, um, there's no cap to it, right? Um, so going to a job means that, you know, you can only work but so much um, as they want you to work. So my thing is always, you know, how can I make more money? So going to school, I'm always, you know, uh, selling stuff on the side, um, anything just to make a hustle. And as I, you know, grew up and got, you know, older, um, I would say, you know, I tried pretty much everything, man. You know, the, any little marketing, any little uh, business, um, I've been a part of, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, what I would call pyramid scheme business, um, you know, tell your friends, you know, build a community, um, tried a lot of those, uh, built my own website, uh, tried to source product from China. Um, so I did a, a lot of that stuff, right? And then um, my real corporate job was working for Home Depot as a merchandise supervisor. So I did that for 11 years. And um this whole Amazon thing started one day I was at my um, barbershop and my best friend is a barber. So, you know, we we're just having a conversation about, you know, investment and, you know, kind of what we want to do. And he was just telling me about a customer that he previously cut um, that's actually, you know, selling stuff on Amazon. And he's like, man, he's making good money. And I'm like, that sounds interesting. So I went home, uh, kind of locked myself in for about, I would say about a week or two weeks. And just hibernate you know i go work come home back on my computer and um all i would do is just soak up as much knowledge as i could you know instagram uh youtube just kind of seeing you know what what people are doing at that at that time there wasn't that much information out there um but there was a few people on the internet that was kind of like you know coaching you through the process um so you know that's kind of how i got into it um is you know from a friend that told me about it and I figured out, you know, this is a great opportunity since I've been looking for something to do. And I, I soak up as much knowledge as I can. I started doing it part time as I was still going to work. Um, and as I was making as much money um, on my, you know, 1099, as I was making uh, from my corporate job, I was like, okay, this is it. And that's when the light bulb turned on. Yeah. And that's kind of when you went all in with it. Yeah, that's when I, you know, um, I stepped down from my position and then I told him I wanted to go part time um, just so that way I can kind of keep my foot in the door as I build uh, my side business to become my main business. Um, so I didn't want to just take that leap of faith and put myself in too much risk. Um, so I was still going there part time, um, still had my benefits and all that stuff while I was, you know, putting more time into um, my side hustle at the time because I figured if I'm only doing it part time and it's actually working out, I'm making good income from it. Um, what if I devote um, the other 90% of my time uh, to this business? You know, what kind of difference would I be able to make 
And that's when I decided that, you know, I'm going to, you know, give it a try. I'm going to step down from my position, not completely quit the job. Um, just that way I have a leg in. So if it doesn't work, at least I have, you know, uh, some room to go back. Um, but, you know, um, that's, that's what I did. And um, it's just been uh, great ever since. Yeah. I mean, I think it's dope too, because the fact that you didn't leave too early, right? Like you made sure like, all right, you know, let me make this into, um, it's still a side hustle and it's, you're definitely being successful at it, but you didn't leave and it sounded like until you were ready. Um, yeah, because, you know, th- th- there's risk at everything you do, man. Um, you know, no matter how good it is. Um, and then you find out that, you know, not because someone else is doing it means it's going to work for you. Um, so a lot of times it's like, you know, people will say, Hey, you know, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, this is what I'm doing. Um, it's working for me, but you might not have the same skill set, or you might not have the same mindset. Um, so you definitely want to, you know, uh, take some time to, you know, understand uh, the business, understand your risk tolerance as well um, before you jump right in, because there's always going to be mistakes. And um, as long as you give yourself enough, you know, room for error, um, it's not going to be as, as, as impactful as, as it would for those people who are just going to dive head out uh, mm. into anything. It doesn't matter whether it's business or whether you're trying to learn a skill. Um, I always say, you know, take your time. Um, figure out your own risk tolerance and, and go at your own pace. Yeah. I mean, like you I mean, you hit it right there. I mean, there's always an, you know, risk when it comes to investing. You just have to make sure you weigh your options. Um, so just talk to me too about what exactly it means to make money through Amazon, right? Um, obviously we know Amazon is, is a place where you can um, sell online, but what exactly is it uh, specifically that it is that you do to, in order to uh, make money from it as well? Um, so, so there's, there's a, a different, there's different business model as far as Amazon is concerned. Um, so at the very basic level, it would be um, RA, which is, they call it retail arbitrage. Um, so what this means is you're going to regular um, retail stores, you're buying products at either clearance price or at regular retail price, and you're selling it back online um, for a markup, right? So, um, and the reason why this happens is because either the demand is high um, because you know it's not available everywhere, or you might say, for instance, have a target in your area, but there's not a target in another state, right? Um, so someone uh, might been to a target before and say, okay, I like this product, but there's no target in their area to get it. So if they go online, they can just click the button, have that product delivered to them. So they're willing to pay a premium for it, mm. right? So, so that's one business model. Um, the next one would be um, our, uh, OA, which means pretty much the same thing. It's just, you're not going out to the stores you're finding the products online, having them shipped to your location, whether it's your warehouse or your house, um, and then you sell it back online, you know, you process it and ship it out. Um, and then the next business model would be wholesale, right? And this is primarily what the, um, the big retail stores are doing is um, they're buying from manufacturer or they're buying directly from the brand um, so they can get products at a really uh, low price, especially if they're buying in volume, they receive the product, uh, put it on the shelf, you go into the store, you buy it, uh, they make a profit on it. Um, so that's kind of what we're focusing on right now is growing our wholesale business. Um, you do have private label, which means you're manufacturing the product, which means you're bringing a whole new product to market. Um, that's a little bit more challenging. Um, but as long as you understand what you're doing, um, there's definitely opportunities there as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, where we, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I mean, you mentioned uh, retail stores. Um, so like, what are, I guess, some um, uh, popular stores that you might feel that a lot of people tend to go to, uh, but might not realize that, man, this is a store that I could probably be making money off of. Um, pretty much any store, man. Any, any store, if, if you know what you're doing, um, there's opportunities in every store because there's items that are available, uh, like I said, in state that are not available in other states, right? Um, or there's items that might be, short, uh, you know, like demand is really, really short right now, especially with the supply chain that's going on. Um, if you can find a product that's just limited, um, but you can find it in that store, it doesn't matter which store it is, uh, there's an opportunity there. Um, but your major retail stores are going to be like, you know, your TJ Maxx, your Ross, your Marshalls, uh, Target, and, um, and Walmart, of course, is where you're probably going to find more people um, are sourcing from if they're in that startup phase. Mm-hmm. But, what, but how do I know, right, what product to buy? Because obviously, you know, like I said, the stores we all know, but how do we know which product will sell or, or which one people are interested in? Um, that's a good question. Um, because there's just tons of product, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's not like you can just walk in the store and pick up anything. Um, but um, 
it's all data, right? So, so there's apps that we use um, that gives us data that tells us the demand, right? Um, so there's certain apps that we use, uh, for instance, uh, there's one called Keepa and there's Scoutify. There's, there's a tons of different uh, software tools that we use that give us the data to let us know, hey, here's an item that's trending. Um, here's how much you know, it sold for last week, or here's how much it sold for consistently for the last you know, two weeks, three weeks, or even a year. Um, so when you, when you can read that data, you'll be able to say, okay, I can buy this product for $10. I can see that it's selling online for 40. Um, it has your, all your calculation in that app that says, you know, Amazon fee is gonna be 15%. Or my shipping cost is going to be five dollars. So when you add all that up, it'll give you your your net profit at the bottom. So it might say you can buy it for ten, sell it for forty, and you'll make you know twelve dollars, or you'll make five dollars. And that's when you make that buying decision to say, okay, here's a product that I can buy at a low cost, sell it at a higher price, and when all the fees are deducted, I'm still left with a net profit, mm. right? But that's all based on data. You're not walking yeah. in the store and picking up anything. Um, you're going based on if you scan that barcode on that item, you know, for instance, the water bottle right here, if you scan the barcode, um, you'll get some data that says, you know, this product has been selling for $10 for the last six weeks. And you know that you can buy it for $2 or $3. Uh, so you just got to plug all your numbers in. And you scan the barcode with an app or, or your phone, you're saying? Yeah, you're pretty much, you know, any barcode that you're going to get, you're going to pretty much scan that. Not every time it'll come up by the barcode. So you might have to look for the product by the product name. Um, but it's, it's a simple process. Um, where it becomes complicated is understanding the data that you've been given, right? Is understanding the sales price, you know, um, how long it's been selling, um, how many competitive, you know, how competitive that item is. And if, you, you know, are you actually making profit on that item based on how much you're going to pay for it and how much you're going to sell it for minus your fees? Um, because you still got to take all that into consideration. Mm. Now, but with the barcode though, was there a specific app that you used or did you already mention it? Um, yeah, um, there's, there's tons of apps out there. There's FDA Scan, there's Scoutify. Um, there's, there's tons of apps. It just depends on, you know, what's your business model and what's yeah. going to work best for you. And so when you walk into a store, right, I'm sure obviously you have the mindset of, okay, let's, let's you know, let's try and, 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 and get products for a good price and then turn around and sell them. Um, but do you buy, like, in bulk? Is, 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 there, is there, like, a, okay, I want, I want to go to this store for once a week and just kind of rack up and collect, or do you spread it out? Yeah, so, so on that basic level, of, as far as retail arbitrage, um, to get the most value out of it is you're probably, tr you know, you're probably trying to find uh, the same item in every store, right? So that's how you're going to get quantity, right? So uh, most stores, you're probably going to find 10 on the shelf, 12 on the shelf. So you might have to hit two, three, four stores to be able to get, you know, 20 or 30 of a product if it's selling really good. Um, or you probably go in the store, you pick up multiple different items. So, it, you know, it makes, makes that time worth it. Um, but there's a limit to how much you can get if you're doing RA, right? One, there's only so much on the shelf. And two, there's only a certain amount of time in a day for you to drive between stores yeah. to be able to pick up, pick up items. Um, when you transition into uh, OA, you're doing this online. So it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, less time for you to be, drive around but you're still limited, right? Because there's only so much they can ship to you. Uh, when you level up to, you know, maybe wholesale, that's where the game changed because now you can order unlimited amount, right? You can order a pallet, you can order 10, 20, 30, 36, depends on, you know, how much you want to, uh, to order at a time, but there's no limit to how much you want to order there. It's just how much money you want to spend. So that's yeah. when it becomes a game changer, but you, you literally have to go through these processes to be able to, to get to that level to know that, you know, I can order a hundred units and it's going to sell because I've, I, you know, I've looked at the data yeah. and it's telling me that, Hey, if I order 10, you know, 10 of this or 20 of this or 30 of this, I'm going to be able to sell it. And I'm not going to sit on that inventory. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, if you go to these stores this often or that often, um, what's like your preferred method of payment? Like, do you, do you end up getting like a credit card with these companies? Is there any like, type of reward system that you've checked out? Um, I would definitely recommend doing it that way. Um, for starters, uh, most people, you know, probably don't want to put themselves into too much debt. So they'll just say, hey, you know, I've saved up $100 or something like that. I'm going to use this cash for that way. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, force myself into any situation. 
Um, but if you're serious about it, I would advise, you know, doing it that way because there's so much advantage when it comes to uh, leveraging your credit um, or credit card, right? Um, for instance, cashback points, um, bonus points, um, you know, not having to pay for something 30 days where if you can buy the product, sell it, make the money back and being able to pay off that credit card, um, that's a cycle that, you know, you're not really using all your cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely that's what I would recommend. But for starters, most people are just going to use up whatever money they have saved up. Okay. So what would you say, knowing everything you know now, right? What's a good number to start with dollars wise to really get started making money through Amazon? Um, I've seen people start with, with all different kinds of, of, of budgets. Um, it, it all depends on what area you're in. So, um, let's let's say for instance you're in an area where there's a lot of thrift stores right or you're in a college community um you can start with books which is a good way to start because books are fairly inexpensive right um you can pick up a book for anywhere from you know 50 cents sometimes 10 cents to a dollar and you know you could turn around and sell that book for 10 20 um if it's a textbook you could even sell that book for over a hundred dollars um so your roi on your money there is going to be uh significantly higher than you would if you go into a store and buy, for instance, you know, a, a pack of, uh, say, deodorant or body wash for five, six, or ten dollars. Um, now you're really racking up uh, your 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 budget. So you know you can start with a hundred dollars. Um, you know, if you walk into a thrift store and you're getting books for ten cents or fifty cents, you can walk out with a whole lot of inventory, right? If you walk into Walmart with a hundred dollars, you might not walk out with that amount of inventory. Right, right, right. Um, so, you know, it, it all depends on what's available to you. And um, you can start with as little as, as $100 and get the ball rolling. Dope. Okay. So that's a, that's a great starting point. Uh, but it's great. So a unique, I guess, question that I have for you is, who exactly are you selling it to? Right? Because obviously, I mean, when you said you're in the store, you're scanning, you compare it to the price online. But do you already have, like, a seller in place? Or do you just post it online? Um, so the way Amazon works is, um, you know, it's their platform, it's their customers, um, they have their own traffic, um, which is kind of different if you're selling like, for instance, on a Shopify site, you're trying to drive traffic to your store, uh, to, you know, for people to purchase. Um, but as far as Amazon goes, they have so much traffic coming to their, um, their platform on a, you know, hourly daily basis, where there's not much that you have to do to get your products in front of customers. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, as long as you put your products up and your price competitive, which means you're fairly within the same price of, you know, your, comp uh, your uh, whoever else is selling that product, your competition, um, more than likely you're going to get some sales. Right. If, if a product is selling for ten dollars and you go in and price it to 50, uh, you're kind of way out of the ballpark. Right. right? right. Um, but if you price it at, you know, the same, you know, eleven or twelve dollars, you're more likely to get some sales or if you price at the same ten dollars. Um, you're definitely going to get some traction. So um, there's just an influx of, of traffic and customers coming to Amazon platform on a daily basis where, um, you know, if you have a good product that's in demand and it's priced right, um, it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So talk to me too, though, about um, if you had any early struggles with Amazon, because obviously, you know, you mentioned with your uh, journey, you know, through being an investor and an overall entrepreneur, you mentioned you've done, you know, a variety of things. Um, but with Amazon specifically, um, has there been anything where you feel like, okay, this didn't work, but let me adjust? Um, yeah, of course. Um, you know, every step of the way, there's always adjustments, there's always failure, um, and there's always room for improvement as well. Um, you know, some of the biggest hurdles uh, I've had to, you know, deal with is, um, you know, when, we, when I just started this business and I realized that, you know, okay, this works, um, one of the biggest thing was time management, right? So again, there's only so much I can do by myself. Um, if, I'm, if I'm going out, purchasing the product, I need to take them home, uh, get them prepped, ship them out, um, and then repeat that cycle all over again, right? Um, so you hit that point where you're like, okay, you know, I want to grow, but I can't because there's only so much time I have within a day. Um, so overcoming that was bringing someone else on board. Um, so that was like the first, the first obstacle, right? And as I do that, then I run into the next ob obstacle, which was space, right? Where it's like, okay, you know, there's only so much I could do out of my bedroom, um, then move it to the garage. There's only so much you could do out of the garage. Um, now we need a warehouse space. Um, you know, moving to a warehouse space, 
and then you're doing more business, now it becomes um, a cash flow issue, right? Um, if you want to grow, you need more money, you need more funding. Um, so there's every step of this, uh, of, the, of you know, you growing this business, you're going to run into some situation that you're going to have to figure out and, you know, to be able to move to that next step. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the business itself, um, there's a lot of turning pieces, right? You know, um, it's not as easy as people think it is by, you know, buying a product and selling it on Amazon. There's a lot of legal issues. There's uh, paperwork. There's accounting issues, right? Um, we've had our account suspended once before, which means your entire business is down and now you got to figure out how to get it back up. Um, so there's always going to be challenges and, uh, and, you know, different things that you're going to have to overcome um, as you grow. And at the position that we're in right now, um, trying to expand our business, um, the biggest thing that we're trying to figure out now is just inventory management and cash flow. So, so how did you bounce back from that moment though, having the, the business be temporarily shut down? Um, when, when you're, it doesn't matter which business you're in, um, it's good to network with you know, people within those same industry, right? Um, because it's not all about what you know, it's about who you know. Um, so if you know a lot of people, you can get resource and information um, given to you. So um, being a part of the community of, of reselling and Amazon sellers, um, there's a lot of information out there um, to help you out whenever you're in a situation. Mm. Um, so I'm a lot of, you know, a lot of communities and Facebook groups and, uh, and good friends of mine, you know, from, from being in this business, um, there's companies out there that are able to help you get your business back up uh, once, you, once you're suspended. Because it's a whole process, right? Once you're suspended for any given reason, um, Amazon puts you to a process to get your business back up. Where you literally have to prove that um, whatever happened won't happen again because you've put in safety procedures or, you know, um, yeah. to prevent that from happening again. Uh, so they have you go through this entire process and um, it's something you can do by yourself um, and be successful at it. Um, but that's why we have professionals for, you know, certain things. That's why we have lawyers. We're not going to show up in court and try to represent ourselves, um, even though we can. Uh, but we reach out to some professionals and they were able to um, get us through the process and get us back up and running. Okay. No, no, no. One, congratulations for, for getting back. Um, but two, you mentioned information um, and being in Facebook groups and just overall learning from other um, Amazon uh, sellers and resellers. So if you could just touch on the fact that, you know, you've been willing to, to continue to learn about this whole process, because even before you said you watch YouTube videos a lot. So kind of what does that mean to you? Um, that's it's, it's huge. Um, I've invested a lot into just uh, knowledge, you know, uh, learning, understanding, um, growing. And I tell, you know, people that um, as far as my operation goes, um, I do the less physical work in the business, um, but I have one of the hardest tasks because my task is to learn, to train, and to make sure we're always growing, mm. right? <clears throat> so, so my job is, is very um, um, tedious as far as, you know, are we growing the business or, we, you know, the business is just staying still or are we dying? Um, so a lot of that has to do with uh, networking with other people or going to ev uh, events, right? Um, and a lot of times you might, you might say, okay, I'm not going to pay this money to go to this event, but it's not so much the event. It's about the people that you meet once you're there, right? It's that, that connection that you make. It's that friendship that you built, um, that relationship that you harvest with someone that can help you later on in your business or in your personal life. Um, and, and a lot of events that I've been to, a lot of um, networking on Instagram, social media, um, YouTube videos, a lot of that have helped to grow my business um, and also personally as well. Because mm -hmm. people are already in position where you want to be or they're already, you know, gone through whatever experience you're trying to go through now. So it's easy for them to coach you through it and say, hey, here's the mistakes I've made. Um, here's the direction that you need to take. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Um, that you've learned the most from, from being in those groups in, in terms of, you know, what to do and what not to do through Amazon? Um, I would say the, the, the biggest thing for me is just persistence. Um, because there's always negative and positive about any business or anything that you want to do. Um, you might hear, you know, one person said, okay, this doesn't work, it sucks. Um, and then on the other side, you're going to hear someone say, you know, how good they're doing, right? 
Um, so you have to monitor your own uh, impact or, you know, what you're trying to get to and, um, and stay persi persistent, right? If, if that's really what you want to do, um, you just got to put in the time. You got to put in the work. Um, you can't give up or you can't expect to have results um, if you're not putting that kind of work in. Um, so the biggest thing for me, you know, being in these groups or networking with people, it helps me to um, stay that course and just, you know, be persistent at, at whatever I'm doing, right? I'd rather to, to just keep going and fail at it and know that, okay, at least I tried, right? Um, what's next? Or, you know, maybe I could do this a different way. Yeah. And so being persistent, right? Because I think something that a lot of people might face is the idea of quitting and, and quitting too, uh, too early. Um, so when someone is first, let's say, starting with Amazon, right? Um, how, one, how long did it take you to kind of get your first uh, sale or flip? Um, and two, how long would you recommend someone try it out before, you know, starting a, a, a new adventure with something else? Um, I would say if you're doing it as a hobby, um, you know, you can definitely see some results within six months, right? Give yourself some six months. And then you can make a decision like, you know, I just want to make a few hundred dollars, you know, here and there, uh, maybe to, to supplement, you know, some kind of uh, bill or something. Um, but if you want to do this serious, um, you need to put in at least a year or two um, because it's going to take a lot of structure, right? First, you're going to need to build, um, you know, your self-confidence, right? And then you're going to need to build out a network. You're probably going to need a, a team around you. Um, you're going to need to reach out to suppliers. So, um, there's a lot of uh, building blocks you're going to have to put in place if you want to do this full time. If you want this to be a real business, um, you're going to need a lot of structure. Um, so that takes time to build. So I would say give yourself two years. Um, if you're just trying to make some money on the side, I mean, six months in, and if you're not making enough, um, you know, to cover that bill that you wanted to cover with, um, then I would say look into something else because it's not for everyone. Okay. And then let me, let me, let me play a devil's advocate for you real quick, right? So... Right now, or to most people, it might sound like in order to be successful at Amazon, all you might have to do is go in, put your product up, scan it, take it home, and then sell it on Amazon, right? What part of that either isn't true or deserves more recognition than people probably give? Um, I would say it's, it's, it's true because it's, it's just that, right? You, you scan the product and, you know, you sell it on Amazon. The part about it that people don't understand is, um, are you profitable, right? Because we can sell anything, right? I can go in Walmart and pick up any product and put it online and sell it. Um, but that's not the real purpose is I'm selling it to make a profit, right? So, um, so it, as easy as it sounds, that's what it is. You grab a product, put it online, you can sell it. Um, where the hard part comes in is, like I said, is understanding the data and knowing, you know, am I making money doing this? Mm. Right. Um, because if I'm selling something and I'm not making a profit off of it, then it doesn't make any sense. Or if I buy something and say I'm going to sell it and I put it online and it doesn't sell, then I'm trying to figure out, OK, why is this not selling? And that's because you didn't understand the data. You picked up a product that doesn't even sell online. Mm. Right. So so, you know, understanding what you're doing is, is really, really important. But as far as, you know, picking up something, putting it online and selling it. it it's as simple as it is. Okay. It's, 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 it's not. So talk to me about the labeling and the shipping and the packaging. Because that, I think, to, to me, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first part might sound a little easier in terms of, again, seeing a product, scanning it, comparing price. But how does the, the labeling and the shipping and the packaging work? There's a merchant fulfill process where you basically control um, everything, right? You buy the product, it comes in, um, a customer buys that product, you have to package it, ship it out to the customer. So you, you know, you need to understand uh, somewhat uh, shipping processes, right? How much it's going to cost you, um, what kind of package to put it in, um, how to get that product from your destination, uh, your location to the customer's destination um, safely, right? Yeah. Um, so that's one process. The next process is if you're utilizing Amazon's network, which is the FDA program, which stands for fulfillment by Amazon, they handle all that for you, right? So your job is basically just to get the product to Amazon and they will hold the product in their warehouse and whatever the product sells, 
um, they're going to do all the handling, right? They're going to pick it, pack it, and ship it to your customer, which puts the liability on them. And that allows you to scale your business because you can now source more product while they're shipping products and you're not trying to juggle both at the same time. And, th and this is the FBA model. Correct. If, if you want to scale, then I would say go to FBA model. Even though people have scaled their um, you know, FBM operation, which is shipping from, from their location, um, we're, you know, we do run a hybrid, so we do both. Like I have a team here at the warehouse. Um, so we do some products FDM and then we ship majority, 90% of our products FDA. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I really want to make sure we stress that part too, is you're not sending it to a specific, uh, buyer more so someone that, or excuse me, just straight up Amazon. Yeah. If, if you're in the fulfillment program, you're sending all your inventory to Amazon. So if, if we buy, you know, a hundred, um, sometimes we're shipping in, you know, 2000, 2000 units at a time. Um, we're putting all that on a pallet and then ship it directly to Amazon. Mm -hmm. So when that product sells, Amazon will take that individual product, package it, and then ship it to that, that end customer. Okay, okay. So talk to me too then about setting up that whole process. Do you have like a, an official online store or is it literally everything done through Amazon? Um, you have a storefront. Uh, on Amazon, you have a, a storefront, you know, similar to Shopify where people would go to your direct store. Um, you have a storefront. The only difference is when someone goes on Amazon, they search for a product, um, you know, that landing page with that product is going to show up, but you're going to have multiple sellers that are offering that product. So they might be different price. They might be different seller feedback. Um, so, you know, people like to buy things based on social proof. So um, my account might be a hundred reviews and your account might be 200 reviews. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Amazon preference, um, another thing called the buy box. So even though there's multiple sellers offering that product, there might be one seller that's going to get that sale because that's the seller that's in the buy box. So that's that little button that you see that says add to cart. Whoever that, that seller is that's featured is going to get that sale if they click on that add to cart. So the way that works is um, based on your seller metrics, based on your reviews, based on your account history, Amazon is going to give you some preference, right? So you might get 10 minutes in the buy box. Another seller might get, you know, 20 or the same 10. Um, there's a crazy algorithm that Amazon uses, which we're not completely sure about. But say 10 of us are on one product, 10 of us offering, you know, this water bottle for sale. I might be able to sell five. You might be able to sell four. Um, so it's in a rotation process. So at any given time, there could be someone different being featured in that buy box. And if someone comes on that product and click add to cart, that's the, the seller that's going to get that sale. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how the FDM program works. Okay. Well, there's, there, there's even more gems um, that you're dropping in terms of just, you know, making sure everyone knows um, all of that information is staying on top of all of that. Um, but would you say that this was a, a learn as you go type of business? Definitely, definitely. Because even at the stage that, that I'm at, we're still learning. Um, there's still always um, new things. Um, and there's still always things that I just haven't learned yet because the platform changes, uh, customer behaviors changes. Um, so there's always opportunity to learn more. And there's always new things that are added um, that can help you to grow your business. Mm. Okay, okay. So what, uh, what advice would you have to someone who's just getting started with Amazon. And I guess, um, and I guess, I guess, do you feel like this? There we go. Do you feel that selling on Amazon is for everyone? Do you feel like this whole process is for everyone? No, it's not. Mm. Um, because I've experienced people who started and quit and I've experienced people who started and, you know, they're at the level that I'm at. And I know people that started um, and they've surpassed the level that I'm at. Um, so it's not for everyone. Um, but the advice I would say is, you know, first give it a try, right? Um, because it's hard to say, you know, it's not going to work if you've never tried it, right? So uh, first give it a try. And then the next thing I would say is um, find someone that's already where, at where you're trying to go, right? Or already in the business doing it. Find a mentor, um, you know, shadow with that person, you know, get advice, uh, get coaching, because uh, you're always going to make mistakes, but if you have that some that person that's 
done it before, been there before, uh, your time spent is going to be so much shorter trying to get to where you're trying to get to because they're going to be able to coach you or steer you in the right direction. So my next advice would be to find someone that's already doing it and, and get that person, you know, on the same page with you. So that way you can kind of mentor under that person um, to be able to get to where you want to go. Yeah. That, and that's, the lear- that's critical. Yeah. The learning curve is definitely would, would change because of that. Right. Yeah. But so I, I could be wrong on this, but some possible places you might be able to find a mentor is like what Facebook groups, um, discord, I guess overall social media. Um, yeah, all, all the social platforms, um, there's, there's going to be, um, you know, people on there that are, that's actually in Amazon. Amazon is so popular right now that, um, you know, any social media platform you go on, you're going to find uh, people that are posting about, you know, their, their success. Um, people are posting about either just starting. Uh, there's always going to be a community of Amazon sellers, um, intermediate, advanced sellers that you can connect with um, to be able to find a mentor that, you know, like, for instance, I might not want to mentor with someone, you know, that's doing $60 million because the conversation that they're having, it's way above my head, right? Right. Um, not to say that's not where I want to get to, but you might want someone who's kind of, you know, going to understand the language that you're, you're speaking, right? Because right. they might be using tools and marketing strategies that are way out of your budget or um, just way too advanced for what you're, you're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, so, so find someone, not because they're doing $60 million a year means that, you know, that's the guy that I want to coach me yeah. because again, it might be too much for you at the time. So mm-hmm. as your business grow, then you might switch mentors or you might start to learn from other people, um, you know, as you, as you start to grow, because as yeah. you grow, becomes more advanced skills and you're going to want to learn from those people who are, or who are ahead of you. Yeah. Cause I mean, at that point, they, they probably just scaled to get to that, you know, uh, yeah. 60 million target. It, it wasn't like they've done everything every single day and it was just them. Correct, correct. It's, it's a process. It, it takes time. It takes work. Um, you know, a lot of implementing and, and just investing in, in your own self and knowledge to be able to learn what it takes to get to that next level. Yeah. I mean, you talked about team too. So um, walk me through that a little bit because when I think of all this, it sounds as if it could be, a one person task, right? Like one person goes in and you know, the stuff, they scan it and then they walk out and then they do all that stuff. So what exactly consists of the, the team that comes to this? Um, I mean, there, there are people that are doing this as like, you know, a one man show. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like I said, you're, you're limited, right? You're, you're only going to be able to grow your business um, to a certain level. Um, and then again, that complements what business model you're doing. Um, because in the world of private label, uh, you don't necessarily need so much of a team. You're going you're gonna to outsource a lot of stuff, but you don't need that much of a team, right? Um, because everything is done you know, over the computer. You're ordering products from overseas. It gets shipped to you. Um, so that's a whole different story. Um, if you're doing wholesale, private label, um, or, or retail arbitrage, um, if you want to grow, you're going to need somewhat of a team. Mm. Right. Because, again, if you're outsourcing, someone needs to be prepping and shipping those products out. Right. Because if you have to go source, bring the products home, prepping and ship them, um, there's only so much time that you can get to be able to go find more inventory. Mm. Right. So I've learned that, you know, pretty early uh, uh, in my journey. And um, I brought in uh, someone to help me uh, at the warehouse at the time. And today we have uh, three people at the warehouse, I have three uh, physical workers here, and then I have a team of five VAs, right? So mm-hmm. those are um, in the Philippines and they, they basically do um, data research, right? Uh, so finding wholesale suppliers, uh, going through price lists, putting um, order sheets together, um, anything that we have to do within our account that doesn't require any physical uh, labor, um, they're handling all that stuff. So you need that team around you uh, to be able to grow because now my job is to figure out, okay, where are we um, having some issues, right? Um, can we be more efficient at, at how we're packing stuff in the warehouse, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what suppliers do we need to reach out to? Um, where are we losing you know, money because we're doing something wrong or um, you know, we have some customer complaints that we need to follow up on. So my job is to really make sure that those things are happening and to look at you know, what opportunities we have as far as where we need to start focusing more to grow the business. Mm, okay. 
And you said you've learned about all this either through your barber, right? Or your friend is a barber? Yeah, about the, uh, the whole Amazon business aspect. Um, I learned about that through a friend, which is my best friend who's a barber. Knowing everything you know now, between, I guess, the first conversation you had with the barber, did you ever think you'd be in this position now? Um, yes and no. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I mean, my, my dream, is, like I said, is always to, um, to do something where there's no uh, cap to it, right? There's this it's potential base, right? is how much work you put in is how much you're gonna get out. And um, that's kind of where I see myself as doing something of that nature. Um, so me, you know, being in this position, I felt like, you know, it's something that I've manifested. Um, I just didn't know what vehicle was gonna get me there. Um, and then, you know, finding Amazon definitely put me in that position to do just that. Yeah, so, I, mean, I always feel like, you know, sometimes all you need to do is just be good or great at one thing. You know, and yeah. sometimes it takes trial and error and, and in a lot of different areas. But once you find that one thing, you can just run. And it sounds like you've done just that. You know, you yeah. found it and scaled. And, and, and tried different things, you know, because, you know, like I said, you know, a lot of things that I've tried didn't work. But what it did was um, it allowed me to know that that didn't work. So move on to the next thing. Right. And then it gave, you know, gave me some experience to understand the next thing that I'm going to do, what I need to do, or, because it's like, you know, I've did this before and that didn't work. So let me change what I'm doing on my next adventure. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of experience that comes through trying different things, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then my as far as, you know, where I've learned a lot of my skill set and, you know, as far as team building and management is through my corporate job. So it's not always bad to have a corporate uh, a job because there's things there that you can learn that you can bring over into your entrepreneurial journey, um, you know, to, to help you to grow. Thanks. Nice. I mean, you got to learn from every situation, you know, the good and the bad. Um, I mean, you're talking about, you know, trial and error. Failure to me is just one step closer to success. I mean, you mentioned it like, you know, once, you know, you, you find out what doesn't work, it's now behind you. Right now you can kind yeah. of focus on what, what does. Correct. I mean, so I, I, would, I would say too, right, to kind of put all of this into perspective. Um, so starting from stage one, right, to cover everything that we talked about in terms of starting, um, you know, a, a business and making money through Amazon. If today was my first day ever and I wanted to make money through Amazon, what would walk, walk me through the process, right? Let's, let's start from the top and just take it one, one step at a time. What would be the first thing we did? Um, so I got one question before before I answer that is, um, are we talking to someone that cash is you know is not an issue, or we're we're saying you know hey I'm let's, let, let's let's say I got let's say I got two hundred dollars that 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 okay. that's what I'm sorry we, we we got listen we we can do it uh, two ways one let's just start for two hundred dollars and then maybe next one we say uh, two two thousand okay um, so if we're starting with the you know with the uh, individual with two hundred dollars um, I would say you know uh, go source some books. Uh, start sourcing books, um, find out what thrift stores are around you, um, find out if there's any college in your area, um, because that's where you're going to get really high dollar uh, textbooks and, and start there because that $200 is going to allow you to get a lot more as far as inventory and get a lot more, uh, higher ROI on your investment, on your $200 investment. So, you know, even if you buy a couple of books and, you know, 10% of it doesn't, you know, make you nothing you're still winning, right? right? Because your, your investment is so small, but your return is going to be way higher. Um, versus if you go take that same $200 and you buy, you know, a pair of Nike uh, yeah. for $50, you know, you're only going to get four and then two doesn't sell and you're, you're negative, right? Um, so that's what I would say is, you know, uh, start with some books or start with, you know, the clearance section, go, go into your big box retail store, and find things that are going to be the lowest um, uh, buy cost as possible um, with a higher markup. So that way you can sell it online and secure your profit, right? If it says you're only going to make a dollar or two dollars, then I probably would stay away from it. If it says you're going to make 10 or 20 dollars, then that's something I would definitely pick up because there's room there for error. Even if that price got lowered down and you're only making 10 dollars instead of 20 now, you're still in the green. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say for someone who's who's um, starting with a, a you know less capital than the average person. Okay. And what do you say the app was again for them to be able to check the price? 
Um, you can use uh, Scoutify. That's one that we've used, and um, it gives you a lot of data that uh, most of the regular apps won't give you. Okay, bet. So now, let's say we walk to the store. We got the app. We've scanned it. We compared it. We ran the number. We ran the price. Um, and we use our own money, right? Just for now, twenty dollars or whatever it is to pay for mm -hmm. it. I bring the products back home. I now I have, let's say, you know, uh, one hundred forty dollars worth of uh, of product. Let's say that you know they spare themselves sixty. You have all that product, right? And you know how much it's worth because you've searched it. Now, what's the next step? Um, the next step is to figure out, you know, what are you going to do as far as what business model you're going to use to uh, fulfill those orders, right? Um, am I going to package this up and send it all to Amazon? Or am I going to list the product? And do I have the capability to ship these out to my customers? Do I have packaging supply as far as box and tape and label and a printer to be able to print the labels? Um, so if, if you don't have all those equipments, which are going to cost you an additional amount of money, um, then you might want to you know, ship that to Amazon and let that, you know, Amazon handle all that for you until you can get some money to, to say, invest in a printer or some, some labels and boxes yeah. to be able to do that fulfillment yourself. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's what I talked to about the $200 budget because the $200 budget wouldn't just be, you know, say they went to the store and they could spend $200. I mean, you know, in a, in a person real, you know, realistic situation, that's all they have total. Right. So yeah. how, how would they go about shipping it to Amazon? So, so if, if that's the only $200 you have, I, I wouldn't say spend it all on products, right? Spend $100 on product because first, you're going to need to get an Amazon account open and that's going to be $49 a month, okay. right? Uh, once you get that account open, you can probably put it on a credit card because you're going to need that to be able to open your, your account. Um, again, you can buy products, send it in and being able, you know, be able to sell those products because say you buy those products and you ship it in and it takes a week to get to Amazon um, and then you sell it, you know, your first initial payout is going to take about a month to get it. Uh, so you're going to need at least some spare money to cover that first month bill. So you're going to need to pay that first $49 um, for your account subscription. Mm -hmm. right? So I would say, you know, leave $100 to be able to cover any other expenses. You might need to buy a few boxes. You might need to buy a roll of tape to get those products out to Amazon. So I wouldn't yeah. say spend your two hundred dollars just on products spend a hundred dollars on product and then that that next hundred dollars you're going to save that to make sure that you have an efficient process of you know shipping the products out and being able to pay for that first month of subscription okay okay copy 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 so you pay you said it's uh 49 a month for it yeah it's 49 dollars a month for the pro subscription and that gives you ability to um use the amazon fba fulfillment program and it gives you the prime badge, which means when you ship your product into Amazon, you get a prime badge. And that prime badge is significantly will increase your chance of that product being sold. Mm. Um, if you just use a basic plan, um, you can still use you know, most of the, the features. Um, but what happens there is every product that you sell, you're going to be charged a dollar. So say you sell 40 products or say you sell 50 products for that month, you're basically paying $50 or say you sell a hundred products. Yeah. Now you're paying a hundred dollars for the month for a subscription that you could have just paid $50 yeah, for. Yeah, at that point, you probably should have just got the, the regular subscription anyway. Correct, correct. Yeah. Like for us, you know, we're moving so much units, um, it makes sense to pay that $50 a month than if we were paying, you know, a dollar per unit. That just wouldn't be, you know, worth it. Yeah, but I mean, what, so if someone, like I said, were just getting started and they didn't know too much about it, maybe, do you think, in your, in your opinion, starting off with that basic plan just to see, you know, if it is something that they end up doing long-term or just to, you know. Yeah. And, I'm, and again, I'm, I'm just saying in terms of people, like in terms of cost, if they want to save money and stuff like that. Yeah. Always, always start with, with the basic. All, Cause, okay. cause you, you know, you're trying to figure this out. Yeah. Um, unless, you know, you've done your research already, you know, you have, you know, confidence to say, Hey, I'm all in, I'm going into this, then that's different. But if it's something you're trying to, you know, figure out, okay, is it going to work? Always start with the basics. Always start with the, you know, the less expensive, um, the basic plans that are going to get your foot in the door and gain you some knowledge about the business and the platform. So, gotcha. Yeah, start with the basics. Yeah, okay. All right, so we have that plan, right? So again, we got, went to the store, picked some stuff up, um, created an account. Um, and now, 
we're shipping the product to Amazon, right? Yeah. Okay. Once well, you ship the product to Amazon, how long uh, do we wait? What 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 who uh, what happens after that? Does Amazon let us know? Does the buyer let us know? How do we know that the product is is officially good to go? Um, well, everything is tracked through your through your subscription, your software, your Seller Central account. So you'll be able to see your products in route. You'll be able to know when those products get checked in. And then you'll be able to know when those products go live. So that way you can go in your account, look up those products and see that they're off, they're being offered for sale. Um, now, as, as, as far as how fast those products are going to sell, it all comes down to data. If, if you had good data and you made sure you pick up products that are selling fast because there's a high demand, um, then those products are going to move fast. If you, you know, didn't understand the data or didn't take the time to learn it, then you might have some issues, right? And that's where the learning curve might come in is where you're going to be like, oh, those products that I sent in last week didn't really sell so good. So let me try to, you know, understand more the data that I'm, I'm looking at to be able to know what products are going to sell and what products are not going to sell. Yeah. And so just because you bought a product and just because you bought a product and they shipped it over to Amazon doesn't necessarily doesn't mean, mean that you'll make a, a huge profit. No, it doesn't mean that it will even sell. Mm. It could be a product that probably won't even sell. You might have you might have to recall that product back to yourself, uh, and, and you know because it's just not going to move. There's no demand for it. People are not going on Amazon. They're not searching for it. They're not buying it. Um, so you know you you have to understand the data. Now and that's why I said start with books because you know that allow you to, to have those mistakes. Right? It's, it's inexpensive. Um, you know you're not paying that much. And you have a variety of inventory to be able to understand, you know, as st stuff start to sell, you'll be able to say, okay, why did this sell? Let me go look at it and realize that, okay, this sell because um, it was this title or this color or this size, right? So now that's, that's information that you're gathering that's going to make you more efficient for your next purchase. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. So but once it's all said and done, once you get that from sale or whatever, at that point, it becomes repeat, right? You just do all over yeah. again, right? Yeah, it's just, it's rings and repeat, right? It's, you know, you wait for that, for that funding to be released by Amazon. Again, your first couple of weeks, couple of months, uh, you're going to be in a waiting period because, you know, products just get sold. Amazon is waiting to deliver those products to the customer before they can give you your full payout. Um, so you're going to have, a, a you know, somewhat of a waiting period. But as, as you yeah. start to get that going, it's just, it, it comes down to how fast can you do this, right? How mm. fast can you get more inventory, ship it into Amazon without running out of funding? Because again, you know, the more stuff you buy, the less funding you're going to have. And you're still waiting for that money to come back from Amazon. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, it's all a process, but correct me if I'm wrong, it's a process that's worth it. Sure is, yes. Mm. Okay, so, so what's, what's next? What, what's, what's, what's next for you? Is it, a, um, you know, is it con to continue to scale? Um, because it's not like obviously, you know, you thrive um, throughout the entire Amazon process. So is there another step that you plan on taking? Um, yeah, I mean, as far as the business itself, um, it's just to grow. You know, um, I remember when I made $100 a month and I was excited, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, it takes, you know, a couple of thousand right now to even keep the doors open. Mm. Um, so, you know. The goal is to just keep growing, you know, to gr keep growing as, as much as we can. And that means expanding our team, expanding our catalog, um, expanding our space. Um, so it's, it's a lot of growth as, as far as, you know, getting that bu the business to the next level. Gotcha. Um, but as, as far as for me personally, um, it's also looking into other things, right? Um, just kind of spread my wings, um, you know, make sure that my eggs are not in one basket. Um, so, you know, maybe looking into uh, taking, you know, funds from one business and investing in another business or starting another venture. Um, but nothing that's going to keep me too far away from my main focus here is to grow this thing. Right. I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, def definitely, man. You know, that's uh, dope. And congratulations on, on, on everything Amazon related. Um, I mean, it, it is the way right now and it's been the way for, you know, I guess, a decent amount of time. But as we look ahead, it's more obvious than ever. That money is being made online through Amazon, you know. Um, yeah. But the final question that I have for you, um, it's a question that I've asked everyone that's been on the show, the Fire Legacy. Um, how do you want to be remembered? Um, I want to be remembered for the legacy for what I, what I've 
done as far as you know my family um, that no one else ever did in my family. So I want to be remembered for the person who literally changed um, the outcome of my family. And, and that's been my mission from day one is um, it's not a how much money I make, it's about how I can change uh, the people that are in my circle. Um, you know, I've brought my cousin to work with me. I've helped my mom to quit one of her jobs. Um, so for me, that is more impactful than, you know, making two, three thousand dollars a month. Um, just being able to see them around me, seeing that they're happy doing something that they enjoy. Um, that for me is more impactful. So the legacy of me uh, changing the outcome of my family. And that's that's what, how I want to be remembered. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, you know, you see the for sure, the name of the podcast is, you know, Defiant Legacy. So that that answer kind of just goes hand in hand with this idea of passing down education, you know, and being a person of, of, of value. And, you know, obviously money is good and money is powerful and it's a tool, but, you know, being that yeah. part of your family that has changed the, the mindset, you know. So. Yeah, because right now, you know, um, you know, I'm doing something that has never been done, you know, as far as my family is concerned, you know. Um, starting the journey where, you know, there's not much support and, you know, being an, an entrepreneur, you know, it comes with uh, a lot of responsibility, right? <clears throat> and, you know, like I said, being able to do things for my family member that um, if I was in a corporate job, I might, you know, not have the chance to do um, and the freedom that this gives me as well to be, you know, with my son, uh, go pick pick him up or spend time with him or just being able to do the things that I want to do. It's yeah. definitely life, life changing. Yeah. Yeah, man. And that, that, that's beautiful, man. I'm not serious. As you know, so, um, but definitely, you know, again, congratulations to you now on all of this. Uh, but the final thing I just, you know, want to make sure you, you do before um, I let you go, man, if you could just drop your social media, um, plug in all your, your promo. If you have a course, if you have a, a Facebook or discord group, by all means run and, and, and plug in, plug it in right now if you want. Yeah, I mean, um, my social media uh, handles, I mean, for um, Instagram, it's Steve M. Sinclair, um, my first and last name. Um, that's my personal uh, Instagram. And then we just started um, this company, which is um, SBM, which is, it stands for Sinclair Business Management. Uh, so that's my umbrella company. And then any other companies that I have, um, it's going to be under that company. So our Instagram handle is just the same, uh, uh, Sinclair Business Management. And that's about it, man. Um, I'm not as you know popular as I am on social media. I'm kind of behind the door guy. Um, but it, that's where you can find me. It's yeah. on social media. But you know, though, man. I mean, that that that's fine though, because I I think one of the the beauties of, of, of this show and the guests I try to, to speak with is like, I think when we talk about wealth and making money, you know, people tend to talk about the same four individuals. You know, like Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos. Um, Elon mm -hmm. Musk and, and Mark Zuckerberg and like there's plenty of people that have social media or like may not have social media or a bunch of followers that are killing it in their respective industries um, so yeah. that's why you know I want to make sure I have you on the show and kind of share your story yeah I mean it's, it's like you know there's a lot of people who are who just don't want to be known as well like I know a guy that runs a multi-million dollar business and he has no social media at all well, look, if he ever wants to share his story, you feel free to give him my, uh, give my info and we'll, and we'll chat. Yeah, but no problem, man, for sure. For sure, for sure. But yeah, man, thank you again, Steve Sinclair, making money on Amazon. That's Defiant Legacy. We out.